In this lecture, I want to spend some time proving uh, one of the properties that we saw in, in lecture uh, that we often use to help um, prove that um, functions are big O of other functions. So the, um, uh, the property that I want to prove is, uh, is property number two. Um, it's one that we use quite often, and so I wanted to uh, uh, prove this thing, but also show you how these proofs kind of go and, and uh, uh, give you a sense of, uh, of why this thing is actually true and how this actually works. So let's go ahead and prove this. So it's if f of n is big O of h of n and g of n is big O of h of n, then f of n plus g of n is big O of h of n. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to the, uh, the tablet here to do this. Um, so uh, let me go ahead and start by just uh, writing the, uh, the property down. So we want to prove that if f of n is big O h of n and g of n is big O h of n, uh, then f of n plus g of n is big O h of n. Okay, so just like we did uh, with the proofs uh, in class, uh, we would basically want to set this up in the same way. And actually, I see an error here. This should be h, h of n. Okay, so I'm going to write, uh, write this out, uh, write both of these properties here, this one, or at least uh, both of these uh, parts of the problem out uh, using the definition of big O. So f of n is big O h of n means that f of n is less than or equal to c, I'm going to call it c1, uh, times h of n. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here. g of n is big O h of n means that g of n is less than or equal to C2 times H of N. Okay. So um, what we want to then, uh, what we want, want to do then is show that, uh, you know, if these two things are true, if uh, F of N is big O of H of N and G of N is big O of H of N, then the addition of these two, of F of N plus G of N, um, will get us um, something that uh, allows us to claim that uh, they are both big O of H of N. So I'm going to start by, uh, by taking uh, these two relationships, uh, this one here and this one here, and I'm going to add the F of N and the G of N. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So F of N plus G of N. And what we know is that uh, uh, that f of n is less than or equal to c1 times h of n, and g of n is less than or equal to c2 h of n. So the addition of these two things together is then less than or equal to c1 times h of n and c2 h of n. Okay. So what do we have here on the right-hand side it is, uh, what do we have? So we have h of n here and here. We can factor uh, that out. And this is going to be less than or equal to, let's say, h of n times c1 plus c2. And just kind of rearranging the terms, um, this is the same as uh, c1 plus c2. H of n. Okay, so we're almost done, right? So here's a, this is a constant. I'm going to call this C3. Uh, 
and then uh, and then rewrite the uh, the entire relation, starting from here, to get the following. So I get f of n plus g of n less than or equal to c three times h of n. Well, looking at this, uh, by the definition of, of big O, uh, this means that um, f of n plus g of n is big O h of n. Okay. Now, there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of housekeeping on this proof that I I guess I missed. I needed to um, also include here that this is for for n greater than or equal to n one. This is for n greater than or equal to n two. Um, and then uh, when I finally choose um, C three here, um, this is going to be for n greater than or equal to the maximum of n1 and n2. Okay, so what we're trying to get with get to with this proof um, is that, and actually let me zoom in on this a little bit. What we're trying to get in get to with this proof is that if I have two uh, two functions here f and g or f and g here uh, that are big O of h of n, that the addition of the two of them will be big O of h of n, and you can see here through uh, through a little bit of algebra that um, that is indeed is the case. So anyway, this is uh, this is the type of problem. Um, that uh, are you know being able to prove these types of properties, I think, are pretty is pretty straightforward. Uh, there's a whole bunch of these that are actually uh, available that you can uh, that you can try to prove, and I think that they all pretty much go the same way uh, as far as applying and using the uh, uh, the definition of Big O to uh, to derive uh, the property. So anyway, that uh, concludes this, uh, this lecture.